Welcome to Robin's Nest. So many of us have a deep connection with the animals around us and want to protect them from the pets in our homes to endangered species in the wild. That's why I joined American Humane. As one of the oldest and most effective animal protection groups, we help billions of animals around the world. Join us as we explore how we can build a more humane world together. Hello and welcome to Robin's Nest. I'm Dr. Robin Gansard and this is the official podcast of American Humane and Global Humane, the nation's first and most experienced humane organization focused on the humane treatment of animals all over the world, from certifying zoos to being the first boots on the ground in crisis and rescues, helping to ensure that animals are safe from the filming of movies on sets globally, and that one billion animals in farms are treated humanely, and our military veteran and military dog programs. Today, I'm speaking with Dr. Richard Goldstein, Chief Medical Officer at Zoetis. As a veterinarian, Dr. Goldstein is committed to enhancing animal welfare worldwide. His dedication extends across borders and species, exploring innovative approaches that address the diverse health challenges animals face. Zoetis is also a terrific partner and supporter of American Humane, and we have worked closely on pet preparedness, especially ahead of storm and hurricane season. Welcome, Dr. Goldstein, and thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This is a really, really important topic, and great to be with you. Well, you know, Dr. Goldstein, I live in Florida and I have a lot of animals, just like many of our, our incredible uh, listeners to, to podcast today. And I know that we're all anxious because we hear such incredible dire predictions about this year's season of storms. Tell me, what can Zoetis share with us and what can you share with us for how we can be best prepared uh, to keep our furry best friends safe in times of disaster? Yeah, thank you, Robin. I think, you know, the probably the most important thing is to actually think about it, which is what we're doing right here, which is great, because we have to have a plan. People should have a plan. Uh, what we don't want is for people to panic at the last minute and either not do the right thing for themselves because they don't want to leave their pets or not have the right things prepared for their pets. So having a plan in advance, in advance is really, really important, just like we do for ourselves. And I, I think that's not just in Florida, but that should be true for everyone. And, you know, unfortunately, everyone could face some type of natural disaster, even if it's just a long-term power outage, right, and may have to leave their home or be evacuated. So having a plan for those kind of scenarios, I think, is, is truly the most important thing. And as we think about a plan, I know Zoetis has best practices and tips, and particularly in your role as chief medical officer, uh, what does a plan look like and uh, and how can we go about creating that, particularly now, so that we can be prepared for the season of storms? Yeah. So I, I think, you know, we need, we pets are family members, right? So yes. think of what you would do, you know, for your child or, your, or, or another loved one. We have to make sure that, that all of their needs are kind of organized and taken care of. So we, we have food for them. We have water for them. We have medical supplies prepared. We have their medical records prepared because, you know, our, our pets, you know, they're living for a longer time now. And a lot of them have chronic illnesses. They need chronic treatments. So we need a summary of the medical records. We need their medications, their, 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 their um, food, bedding, everything we could possibly need. And then we also need good identification for them because there is a chance that we'll be separated. We might come to a point where pets go one direction, we go the other direction. So ideally, you know, with, with having them chipped, or at least other type of, of really good identification on them so that we can be reunited when the disaster is over. So getting all that together, giving us having a kind of a kit, which includes all that, I think is really important. You know what I do at my house is we keep a Rubbermaid tote full of uh, bottled waters. We have uh, extra leashes because always when you're in the last minute in a panic, you can't find the leash. We have uh, the little harnesses. We have uh, an extra round of the medical supplies, their heartworm pills and those sorts of things. And I keep little bags of the food. But I do that for about a week for each of my animals. Is that good enough? Yeah, I... Yes, I think I think that's a good start. Right? We, you never know how long these are going to happen. Unfortunately, we've seen you know people have been separated from the animals for months with with some of our national dresses. But that's hard to prepare. 
you know, for, for months. So I would say a week or two is probably the best thing place to start. And then um, hopefully they'll, you know, if the pets are with you, you'll be able to take care of them. If not, they'll be in a, in a place where folks like American Humane come in and, and help take care of them, even if they're separated from their, from their pet parents. Yes, yes. And I also keep dog crates, which is wonderful. So I have those ready to, to stick into our large, our large car that we would evacuate in. So I have all the dogs have their own separate crates and their bedding. And that's all always ready to go at a moment's notice, too. That's great. Robin, I mean, you are prepared. Well, I should be in my role, but I know there's, I still have to remind my family members and friends that this is absolutely critical. And some of our pets uh, haven't been crate trained, uh, you know, and as we know, I've seen a lot of disasters firsthand, and I'm sure you have too, having the use of the crate to keep the pet safe, especially in an evacuation, perhaps in a temporary shelter, that's critical. Do you have any advice, doctor, for how we can advise our friends and family members to work on crate training now too? Yeah, I am a big fan of crate training. I think most veterinarians are. And it's, it is the natural thing that dogs like. Dogs like to have a, puppies or adult dogs, like to have a, a relatively small, safe place where they can go when they need some time alone, where they can go to sleep. Um, it's, you know, if you think about wolves in a den, that is their crate, right? So, so starting at puppies, getting them used to sleeping in their crates, um, you, you can perhaps feed or give treats in the crates. Getting them used to that at an early age is really important. There's a lot of benefits to that, including a, a natural disaster situation, but even just everyday life. Sometimes people come over to the house that are, have issues with dogs or there's another dog that comes through. Having the ability for the dog to actually enjoy going to their crate um, my dogs at home, when I say go to bed, they just run into their crates, each one to their own specific crate, and that's that's how they that's how they like it. That's wonderful. Speaking of dogs, how many do you have? I would love to know. I have two at home, um, mm -hmm. both kind of medical rescues um, with mm -hmm. different kind of chronic diseases. My wife's a veterinarian as well, and so we tend to collect them. So two dogs and one cat at the moment. Oh, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. So we haven't talked about cats, and I also have a cat. His name's Julius Caesar, and let me tell you, he rules the roost with all the other dogs in our family home. Yeah. But you know, cats love to hide when storms come, and sometimes very hard to find them uh, in, in a home. So what do you recommend about evacuation with our, with our feline friends? Yeah, great question. You know, cats you cats can get to like their crates as well. It's a little harder maybe than dogs. It comes a little bit less naturally. But I would say if you're anticipating a natural disaster, keep the cat in one room where they're with a litter box and food and don't, you know, don't risk losing that cat for when you really need it. So as soon as you see the cat, if you know it's coming, close the door, make sure the cat is with you in that room or in that room at least with litter and, and water and and um, and food. So that when yes. you do need to collect the cat, you can in a hurry. And I've also found in grocery stores, there's those small uh, litter boxes that are already made up and you just have to pull off the, the top for litter. So we keep a couple of those on hand. And I believe now, I always like to be prepared, the Girl Scout part of me, I guess, to really stock those things up now, particularly the bottled water, the cat litter, the cat food, the dog food, all of that I keep stocked up now. And again, I use those Rubbermaid totes that are really nice and easy to grab when you're getting ready to evacuate and you're thinking about all the other things that uh, your family's facing as you're trying to get out of harm's way. So Dr. Goldstein, what else uh, can we think about in terms of a plan just to make sure we're ready? I know I always like to print out medical records because I recognize that our local veterinarians may not have power or electricity. They themselves may be impacted by the disaster. So I like to have a printed copy, a little file that I keep uh, in my uh, disaster prep kit. Yes, so I, that, that's a really great point. I think so. The, the, there are the pieces that, in addition to kind of that rubber crate with the food and, and the bowls and, and the water, is, is the medical piece. So we have pets with chronic diseases, right? We have diabetic cats, we have dogs on chronic medication, and, and those can't stop just because there is a natural disaster, right? So make sure that we have a good supply of the medication and the records, because if we are separated, we need to make sure that the veterinarians at the site know how to continue the treatment of the pet and then identification. But we need to make sure that if we are separated, it'll be really easy for us to find our pet and our pet to find us. So having them microchipped um, is, is really a, a wonderful thing. And then having really good 
paper identification as well is, is really important. I also love photographs. And the reason I love photographs, which I ne never occurred to me before working at American Humane and responding to a disaster, is that I've seen our shelters in action. Uh, Dr. Goldstein, I remember our groups, our rescue teams deploying in Houston after Hurricane Harvey. Those devastating floods in Houston were heartbreaking to witness. And I personally remember the story of one family. This family, they uh, had floodwaters rapidly approaching their neighborhood. They had beagles. They loved their beagles. And they had a senior beagle, an old grand dom dog. She was gorgeous and they had some younger beetles, they had some small children, and they were trying to load everything into their SUV and get their children in and their dogs. And the senior beagle was so disoriented that she ran off and they couldn't grab her and they had to evacuate without her. I'll tell you, to this very day, I still get goosebumps when I remember the story of our shelter. Our shelter was set up, our emergency shelter, where we were rescuing pets, bringing them in every single day. We had over 400 pets that needed to be reunited with their family members who had been separated in the time of the evacuation with those floods after Hurricane Harvey. What happened in that was we had everyone bring their pictures to reunite. So we took pictures of all those dogs, had them on huge boards posted in our temporary emergency shelter. And there this family came and they brought a picture of this senior dog, this incredible beagle. And sure enough, our team remembered. And I'll never forget those little kiddos running down this whole row of crates and finding their dog and reuniting with that dog. And those photographs are really, really important. So I always keep recent photographs of my pups because I know that that is a really important tool when we're creating an emergency disaster shelter where we're trying to reunite these pets with their homes. Oh, that's, that's, that's such a great idea and such a great story. And, you know, I think, I don't know that everyone understands and knows exactly what you do at American Humane. It's, it's such amazing work. Uh, things like that affect those people involved at that moment and the other people around the country or around the world might not know. But it's such, it's such wonderful work that you do. So, so thank you for doing that. Oh, Dr. Goldstein, we do it because of you and Zoetis. We're so grateful. In fact, at Hurricane Harvey, you were so gracious to donate medicines, very important life-saving medicines. So when each of these animals came in, we could treat them with our veterinarians on site. That saved so many animal lives. But we, you and I both know, it's not just saving that one animal life rescued in a disaster, it's also giving that family hope who've lost everything. If you remember more Oklahoma, there was that devastating EF5 tornado and American Humane responded. And again, thank you Zoetis for giving us access to those vaccines and all the, the help. And it was so incredible what you do for us to allow us to serve these animals. In that devastating EF5 tornado, humans and animal lives were lost. This community was devastated. And in pulls in our incredible rescue trucks. And so I just was so just generous in allowing us to put together these rescue trucks too. So thank you. We pull in with our logos. We're ready with our team members and we're there bringing them hope. There were so many animals missing and one lady had lost everything and I'll never forget this woman's face. I'll never forget her telling her story. All she wanted was her gray kitty back. So she talks to our rescuer, Manny, who'd been in most of our rescues for over 25 years. Talk about a humane hero and an angel. So Manny hears the story and this gray kitty's missing and he recognizes in tornado debris piles where cats can hide. So he's out setting a few traps to be able to catch this scared and frightened cat. And honest to goodness, two days later, he's able to pull up to this lady who's out trying to clean up the debris pile at her home and said, you were looking for a gray kitty and I found him. That lady gives a jump for joy and a dance like no other. The pure happiness on her face. 
after experiencing so much devastating loss of tragic proportions, she had her family back with her kitty, thanks to what we did together. And that's another example of Zoetis and American Humane in partnership after a devastating, devastating storm. So we have so many stories like this yeah. that give me I, I, We could do this all day, Robin. This, this is such good stories. Oh my God, it's so much. But I want to pivot back because I know that mm -hmm. You have provided so much at Zoetis for pet partners, allowing uh, uh, our pet parents to do so much more. Share with us a little bit more that Zoetis does, such as helping out our rescue team. Yeah, so I think there's there's two sides to this, right? So there's the rescue piece where we need to make sure that, that all the pets are getting what they need um, in that short period. Um, if they're injured, they need to be taken care of, obviously. Um, they need to stay on their chronic medication. But there's also the wellness piece. Unfortunately, some of these instances, the pets are separated from their families for a long time, or the veterinarians had to shut down their clinics, right? So if the, if the clinics have been damaged and they had to evacuate the hospitalized pets in their clinics and they can't see new appointments, someone also has to do, and this is a wonderful thing that American Humane is doing, is taking care of the day-to-day, -day, even the wellness piece, right? We don't want dogs um, in, in Louisiana, for instance, getting heartworm in the middle of this, everything else that's happening because they're, they're off their heartworm preventatives um, or getting infectious diseases because they're, they're, they're late for their vaccines because they've been separated from their normal veterinary care. So the wellness clinics that you folks do and that we are very, very proud to, to help um, and support are maybe not as exciting as, as the disaster itself, but they're really important for the long-term care of these of these pets and so I, I i love that partnership i think it's a it's just a wonderful thing that you do and we are very very proud as well as to, to help with that oh dr goldstein we just did one as you know in louisiana yeah. a few short yeah. weeks ago yeah. and you know they are so important because you know we have to keep our best friends well and that preventative health is really really critically important and we couldn't do that work boots on the ground work to really help that human animal bond continue to strengthen and grow without our partnership and those pet wellness clinics are some of the most exciting i understood and from louisiana reports that there were cars a mile long waiting to yeah. get in to bring their animals hundreds of animals hundreds. were uh were treated uh, in that clinic. And that's just one of many we've done together. So thank you so much. Yeah, my thank understanding you. is that many hundreds, which is great. Mm -hmm. And then you know, our local teams get to be involved. And for them, this is such an amazing opportunity to give back and to, and to do something so meaningful. So when you, when you talk to our, our field folks, uh, veterinarians and, and other representatives and, and ask, you know, what is the most impactful thing you've done all year? They, they will quote these clinics as, as oh. something that was just so important to them and, and, and um, the feeling that they're really doing the right thing for the pets and, and the pet parents. That makes me so happy. And I know our teams love them too, because we always love to be uh, preparing uh, for uh, the seasons of storms and those sorts of things. And if an animal comes to us in a, in a well condition, that means uh, there are better outcomes as we face yeah. other issues that are beyond our control. So I love those pet clinics too. Yeah. And I think um, one, more, one more point that I think is important to emphasize that you folks do, and maybe don't give yourselves enough credit, it's not, these are, these clinics are not just in the disaster areas. They're also in very remote areas that just don't have a lot of access to veterinary care. And, yes. you know, so, so these are places where people would have to travel a long way to get to a veterinarian, may not be able to afford to do that. And so you providing care and, and, and basic wellness um, support to those pet, pets out there is, is just phenomenal as well. Thank you, thank you so much. And all of those clinics for our listeners in Robin's Nest today, they're all free of charge. And Zoetis and American Humane do that together. And that free of charge care, again, allows us to uplift that human animal bond that we all celebrate so much as our shared values at Zoetis and American Humane is uplifting that, that incredible bond that we, uh, we know is so valuable, especially in today's times with families. For sure. One thing that I wanted to talk about is something very, very exciting to us at American Humane as we're educating uh, and uh, sharing uh, with our wonderful listeners and, and animal lovers around the world. We do want to make sure everyone's prepared. And you are so right, Dr. Goldstein. This is not be prepared just for hurricanes. This is for fires, for floods, 
for any sort of natural disaster where there's an emergency evacuation. And in some cases, there's not time. In times of fires, for example, you may already be separated from your pets and not be able to go back in to, uh, to rescue them, to bring them with you. Our pet preparation campaign that's underway this month also involves a matching campaign. Right. I'd love to hear you share a little bit about how important this is. This is just another wonderful opportunity to, for us to make sure that all of these endeavors are supported as best we possibly can. So we're matching uh, the donations that are made on this special site um, up to a significant amount of money, dollar for dollar, to make sure that American Humane can continue to pursue all, all, all these wonderful things that, that they're doing. It's, 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 uh, it's, just a, it's just a nice, really important part of what we can do as an animal health company, and it's our pleasure to support the American Humane. We are so grateful because I know together we're going to save so many yeah. animal lives with this matching campaign. You're yeah. allowing us to do this incredibly important work. And we are beyond grateful. Dr. Goldstein, you're one of our humane heroes and we're so proud to know you. So thank you so much. Um, there's an area that I haven't covered with you yet, but I know you see a lot uh, in your role as chief medical officer at Zoetis. One thing that we see a lot that we haven't talked about is some of those cases of cruelty and neglect too. Mm -hmm. And not only does our rescue team respond in times of disaster, but we also respond to cases of hoarding, cruelty and neglect. And it was just a year ago where we found a hundred precious kitties in a woman's house, a hundred of them uh, that were part of a hoarding case. And we went in there and were able to uh, save so many lives. Those cases are also hard for our humane heroes to see, our volunteers to see, but I wanted to give them a big shout out because I know they've been on two very hard and difficult cruelty cases very recently. So a shout out to our rescue team. And again, thank you to Zoetis for providing us with critical care support in times of cruelty, abuse, and hoarding cases, because that work doesn't get enough attention, but it's real work that we do, gritty work we do every day. And thank you for helping us in those cases as well. Yes, for sure. There's, it's really sad to see, to see animals that are not treated well and and I, I you know that and doing the right thing for them at that time by bringing them to a safe environment providing the basic support is is again just such a a wonderful thing to do for for those animals so hopefully this doesn't happen a lot and hopefully it won't happen any anymore but when it does saving them is just really 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 important Yes, absolutely. And I know you've been tremendous supporters of our annual Be Kind to Animals campaign. Yeah. And that's the longest running uh, commemorative week in American history where we celebrate the values of humane education, uh, ensuring that kiddos learn the values of kindness, compassion, and love with their animal friends. And if we can build that base with our, with our kiddos, our young people, that will just help us together to build a more humane world. Yes, yes, no question. Uh, it would be a better society when everyone treats pets and all species. Right? We're not just talking about dogs and cats. We're talking about horses and donkeys and everyone else that's out there. Um, that, that is what really what we need is just to be kind. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Goldstein, as we wrap up our time together, I want to see if there's anything else you'd like to share inside Robin's Nest today. Again, we're so proud to know you and we're so grateful for your partnership. What other tidbits of advice you'd like to provide for our incredible listeners? Well, I, I can tell you, I'm going home tonight to make my rubber bin um, a little bit better. I need to check on my, my supplies. <laughs> no, I think, I think this was wonderful, Robin. I think that the, the, just taking a few, a few minutes out of your day when things are calm and okay to be prepared, think about everything in the future, think about what might happen you know, in, in the next few minutes if there's a big power outage or, or a natural disaster. And then I just want to thank you again for all the work that you're doing and, and with the clinics and, and everything else. And it is truly our pleasure to support you. And I, uh, this has been going on for over a decade and I hope many yeah. decades more for as long as it's needed. Well, we are too, and we're so grateful to be a partner with Zoetis in, in our ongoing fight to build a more humane world and to be a great advocate for our furry and uh, furry friends. And you're right, it's more than our cats and dogs. We also have to think about 
our horses, our donkeys, our mules, uh, all sorts of animals who uh, need to be thought about because uh, that's our responsibility uh, as we have them in our lives. So thank you for being an incredible partner. And again, we encourage everyone to look at AmericanHumane.org. Find out more about this exciting matching yeah. campaign. Let's get that donations coming in. Let's get that going so we can be prepared to respond to communities across our great country and save animal lives. And importantly, I believe in we're saving animal lives and reuniting them with the families, we're making our community so much stronger by allowing them to heal in times of crisis and tragedy. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Goldstein, a pleasure to have you on today. And again, thank you for your support from Sowetis. Thank you so much, Robin. Thank you so much for joining us for this week's episode of Robin's Nest. I'm so grateful for Dr. Richard Goldstein, Chief Medical Officer of Zoetis. His information is so timely and it reminds us this very moment to do a little extra pre-planning to uh, make sure our animals are safe in this upcoming season of storms. And to learn more about how to prepare your disaster preparation kit for your pets, check out AmericanHumane.org. And our fact sheets are there, and we help to make sure that all of our best friends are kept safe. Again, thanks so much for listening to this episode. Stay tuned. We hope you'll tune in next time for another exciting episode of what's happening here in this nest. I hope you have a wonderful week and thank you for joining us to build a more humane world. Take care.